All right, Volleyball is Life asks, what inspiration or advice can you give me a five foot seven outside hitter to make as much difference as those who are in the six foot mark? How can I play volleyball at a high level despite my height? You know, I actually love this question because um, I've had some long, wonderful discussions with D1 coaches about this similar topic, which is, which is if I'm looking at a, well, let's look at Hawaii. Hawaii's got Colton. Colton's a six foot outside hitter. He's, he's a dominant outside hitter at division one level mm-hmm. at a very small size yeah. for, for a D1 level. Um, very successful. And then obviously you have a lot of, of taller outsides. And when I'm asking coaches or having discussions, certainly vertical in a, in a, in a shorter athlete is going to relate to quickness. And so you have lots of other things related to that. Um, is if, if all things are the same, smaller hitter, same touch height, bigger hitter, which one would you prefer to take? And the answer that I'm getting across the board over, over long discussions is I'll take one of each. Mm. Um, and so what I would say as a smaller outside is, is that one of the number one things as an outside is ball control. And Donnie, you can attest because you have great ball control um, and you're, you have great vertical and you're not a six, six outside. What? So, so you might actually have a lot more to add to this than I do because I'm six, seven in the middle. <laughs> but even from my perspective, um, as a middle, some of the more difficult hitters to block are the smaller hitters. They bring in different angles. They, they bring in different complications that are not the same as when I'm dealing with a bigger outside. Mm-hmm. So I think the inspiration I have is, which is go with what you have, be the best ball control player you can possibly be, and, and use what your advantages are as a shorter outside. Um, and there are some, and I'll leave that question to you. What are your advantages as a smaller outside? Well, I always got something to prove. I think it's very easy to be motivated. I have to really maximize my intangibles. So I know I'm not going to try to beat the six foot six foot hitter at the bounce game and the block game. I'm going to try to be a lot smarter. And the, the funny thing is going back to what John said about uh, it's frustrating. A lot of people told me it's very frustrating to block me. And it's not because I'm touching 12 feet. It's because I just see these two limbs in front of me. And it's really easy to see when I'm looking up where I've blocked even smaller hitters where I'm like, dude, where is this guy? Kind of squirrely. So it's easy to tool off the armpit just because I'm already there or the elbow where they can't control the ball lower to the ground. So it's just easier to play defense. And so, yeah, so just being a smart player, that's kind of been been my advantage as a, as a shorter hitter. Yeah. yeah, take advantage of your of, of what actually there are, there are definitely advantages. And even taking taking advantage of angles. Um, yeah. Jordan Ewert, you know, he's a he's played high level D one international ball, and and he oftentimes is hitting from outside the pin to get tools back outside the court. Again, taking advantage of, uh, you know, I guess finding an opportunity to become more successful given his, you know, that he's not a six, seven outside. Yeah. And I, I love the answer. I, I think that's the best answer I've ever heard. Well, the, the other great answer was from Doug Beal. He issued a letter from USA Volleyball. It's a long time ago. And he said, addressing the most common questions is my daughter too, or son too short to play volleyball. Um, and he said, he, and this is a response to so many conversations he had with parents. And he said, it's not for you to decide, it's for the coach to decide. Let the coach worry about that. And, and yeah. John keeps referring to, you just have to be the best player you can be. And that's all you have control over. And then I love the question of, you know, I want both. I want a tall hitter. I want a short hitter. And a lot of the great systems, even internationally, you'll see they want that ball control L2. And then you want that, that big gun. You look at the Brazil team from 2004, Jiba 6'2". Dante six seven, they had very different roles, um, and and they complemented each other. And they could take that to practice, and you know, get a chance to work against each other and get better at blocking different types of hitters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and Taylor Crab is another a national championship player, barely oh, yeah. six feet. That's if if that. yeah, yeah, great example. And then uh, Justin Lamb, Division three national. <laughs> Uh, well, he, made, he didn't win a national championship, but he made it to the finals. Uh, I think he was an All-American at the D3 level. He's only 5'10", 5'11", but he 
was a great player from tooling, serving, passing, especially. Let me ask you another one. Are you prefer line or angle? I'm a line guy. Yeah, uh, a lot of the small hitters I know are line guys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wonder, <laughs> I'm almost kidding, why, why is that? More deceptive? I think it's I think it's a byproduct of tooling, right? If you're used to one yeah. tool, you're gonna aim for outside edges. Um, yeah. Very, you know, it takes a lot of bravery, a lot of a lot of heart to, to swing inside and hoping it'll block that you can pull somebody back out to your left or you know yeah. back off the court. It happens a lot, especially if the block's not good, you can get away with it. Yeah. But I think if you're a tool hitter, you're gonna hit line. <laughs> That's true. And then when the set dies in a little bit, it's just so much easier to do a no look line. And very few blockers are disciplined enough to really seal it. You know, they're usually going to try to take a high percentage angle. So there you go. Good advice from Donnie. <laughs> All right. Bye.